Thank you for joining us on this edition of Your City in Five from San Jacinto Plaza. Hello, I'm your host, Ricky Saias. There's a lot going on as we approach the new year. Here's a look at what's happening across the city of El Paso. The migrant crisis continues in El Paso. Title 42 remains in place and the city, along with the Office of Emergency Management, are still helping documented migrants with temporary shelter, transportation and food. The Supreme Court ruled to keep Title 42 in place for the time being. Meanwhile, the City Council approved to extend its state of emergency ordinance through mid-January to help address the federal crisis. Migrants who refuse to stay at shelters can stay warm inside a Sun Metro bus. The city has also set up portable restrooms and washing stations. Public health officials are concerned that migrants who gather in the streets might be exposed to diseases like COVID, the flu, and RSV. To reduce the risk, city staff is removing old and dirty items from those areas and replacing them with fresh items. The city and OEM continue requesting state and federal partners for additional support. You can find out more information on the federal migrant crisis by visiting elpasotexas.gov. Two other city happenings, parts of a building that caught fire about two weeks ago on El Paso Street are being removed. A massive fire ravaged J&J Shoes Warehouse, causing severe damage to the building. A structural engineer who assessed the damages says the building is vulnerable and parts need to be removed to prevent it from collapsing and causing danger to the public and other buildings. A section of El Paso Street remains blocked to traffic. The cause of that fire remains under investigation. Estrella. Estrella. Muchas gracias. Que bonita. City Representatives visited senior centers during the holidays to spread some good news. Now, some centers are receiving new items such as chairs, a microwave, a pool table, a treadmill, and a sound system. That's just to name a few. Each center is getting something new from their wish list. You know, Representative Alexandra Anello surprised seniors at Grandview and Memorial Senior Center. She celebrated the good news with a cake. A lot of these senior centers have been open for you know longer than I've been alive, and and so is their equipment, and and so it's really great to be able to at the Christmas time announce these new improvements that they'll be receiving. A few hundred senior residents enjoyed a catered meal during the holidays, all thanks to the city of El Paso. Parks and Recreation staff serve meals at all senior centers. Our city and five crews caught a few seniors savoring a delicious meal while enjoying each other's company. First of all, we're very grateful for what the city does. We are appreciative of the pool tables, of the chairs, the food, the ambiance. This is a place to come. And it's just not for seniors. They welcome our families also. And that's a plus. The city has four spots where you can ditch your Christmas tree so it can be recycled and turned into mulch. You can take natural trees to any citizen collection station. Just remove the ornaments and lights. Now visit the city's Facebook page or Instagram page to see collection sites. You have until February 11th to recycle your tree. Hard to believe, but the Winterfest season is coming to an end. It ends January 1st, but it's going out with a bang as a few performances are happening this weekend at the Holiday Fiestas. Winterfest has been a huge success. Thousands of people have enjoyed the holiday lights and decorations at San Jacinto Plaza. The ice rink made a return this year with real ice. There were also a bunch of festive activities during the season. Now city staff will take a month off once Winterfest is over and they'll start planning for next year's Winterfest. There is so much to be thankful for as we approach the new year. I'm going to turn it over to our city manager, Tommy Gonzalez, who has this message. So in 2022, we had a great year. We were able to reduce taxes by four and a half pennies. We were able to bring in $45 million in our partnership with UTEP and bring in $25 million for our airport, in particular for advanced manufacturing. This new sector is going to create more careers for our community and for our young people so they don't have to leave UTEP, leave El Paso, be able to create jobs and career, careers right here in our own backyard. We also have seen uh, our wages increase by almost 20% over the last several years. So those have been three huge priorities for our city council. In 2022, we also saw challenges. The immigration crisis has really hit a, a new high. Uh, we've been able to work together with a compassionate community and respond. Uh, as a community and working with all the different communities of excellence partners in our community. Finally, in 2022, you passed a bond election. You went out and voted and said you want more streets. So in 2023, we're going to execute on that bond election promise and execute and bring in more streets for our community. We want to thank you for working with us. Thank you for uh, working in the budgeting process and giving your feedback. We're going to continue that process. We want to hear from you and we look forward to working with you in 2023. 
Thank you to Tommy, our city manager, for those words. And now I want to thank you, our viewers, for watching Your City in 5 throughout the year. From all of us here at the City of El Paso, have a safe and happy new year. We'll see you in 2023.